Welcome to the new chapter on quadratics. In this video, I'm going to talk about what it really means to be quadratic. So to begin our quadratic modeling exploration, let me just write down the form of a general quadratic function. So we would write them as y equals or f of x equals. We would then write the quadratic term, I'll call that ax squared since it has a coefficient. We would then write the linear term, I'll call that bx, since not, those coefficients aren't necessarily the same, plus c for our constant term. So this is the standard form of a quadratic, which you'll learn more about later on in another video. But I want to talk about how do we know something's quadratic, and once we know it's quadratic, how do we come up with a formula to describe its behavior? So you can think about quadratic functions that you know of such as y equals x squared. Right? And you can make a table for it. I'll try some negative values, 0, 1, and 2. So if I substitute these values in, I would get 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. And I could make a graph. I'm going to graph those points. Just doing a quick sketch here to get an idea. and I'd get this parabola shape. So what if it's not so straightforward? What if it's not y equals x squared? Let's take a look at another one. So here's a quadratic function. I've already made a table for you, and if you wanted to make that table, obviously you would just substitute the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in for x. I didn't have to choose those. I chose those because those are you know, smaller numbers. They were easier to work with. And I'd come up with this table. So I want to explore the y values for a little bit. And you've done this already looking at differences uh, when we looked at recursive and explicit formulas. So notice that to go from 5 to 12, I would add 7. From 12 to 25, I would add 13. From 25 to 44, I would add 19. And from 44 to 69, I would add 25. So that would be called the first difference. We just found the difference between each of those terms. And you'll see that that first difference isn't constant. But if you actually look closer at those numbers, 7, 13, 19, and 25, you'll see that there's a pattern to that pattern. So I'm going to find the second difference. So to go from 7 to 13, that's off by 6. 13 to 19 is also off by 6. And from 19 to 25, that's off by 6. So you'll now notice that this second difference is actually constant. And that's good news. Right? So we just figured out that in this quadratic function, that second difference is constant. I'm going to think about the other example we just did. Let me write it down here really quick. So let's see if that works out as well. So this would go down 3, down 1, up 1. That's kind of weird. Um, up 3. So that's our first difference. Let's try our second difference. This would go up 2. This goes up 2. And this goes up 2. So there it is again. That second difference is a constant number. So how can we use that to help us um, come up with the explicit formula? Actually, I'm going to do that in a different video. I would actually rather do something a little bit simpler, especially coming off of the systems chapter. So let me erase some of this stuff for a minute. There we go. And I want to just go on the assumption now that we've realized that this is a quadratic set of data. And it's perfect. Right? It fits that pattern perfectly. So if we already know it's quadratic, let's pretend that we didn't actually know that this was the equation for it. We know that it's quadratic, meaning that it must be of this form. We just have to figure out how do we get the a, the b, and the c. Well, that's what I'm going to show you. So notice that we actually know five points on this parabola. 
but I'm looking for three variables. So if you think back to last chapter, we knew how to figure out three variables if we had three equations. So I'm going to take three of these points that I've just circled, and I'm going to make three equations from each of them. So notice I have a, an x value. Let me get my pointer out here, my new pointer. Check it out. I have an x value, and I have a y value. Again, I'm putting 5 in for y and 1 in for the x's. So 5 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. I'm going to do the same thing with 2 and 12. So 12 equals a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. You need that last equation. So I'm going to do 25 for y and 3 for the x. And now I have a nice system to solve. And notice it's a linear system, right? This is going to become 1a, 4a, and 9a. That's, that's not quadratic anymore, so we know how to solve linear systems very easily. So I'm going to use my matrices. That's what I like to do when I solve things. So, so this equation right here, I'm going to take my coefficients from it in my coefficient matrix. So 1, 1, and 1. Now I'm going to go to this second equation. Let's take the coefficients from this second equation. 4, 2, 1, and now into the third. 9, 3, and 1. And I'm, I know I'm going to type in that coefficient matrix is inverse. That's what I type in the calculator. And then we multiply it by the constant matrix. And that's just going to be right here, the 5, 12, 25. And that's going to get me A, B, and C. So I would pause the video, try doing that in your calculator, and see what you get for A, B, and C. And when you're ready, hit play again. Okay, so hopefully you got that the answer in your calculator becomes the matrix 3, negative 2, and 4. Meaning that the function that describes this table would be 3x squared minus 2x plus 4, which is exactly what we started with in the first place. So notice we used three of these points to find a system, and then we use matrices to solve that system. So you could do this even if you were, I don't know, using a cubic function or a quartic function, something that you haven't done yet. But this method works well with perfectly modeled data such as this. So it's time to try some on your own.